So was it a foreclosure or yeah, one no, someone owned it? Jason yeah. Linder? Yeah. Jason yeah. Linder? Yeah. 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 talks about dogs that have uh, bitten the person uh, one time and then bitten the person the second time. I don't see where we address penalties for uh, the person that is bit one time without a se severe injury. Am I missing it? Yeah. 
definition of an offensive dog, and I don't see any uh, which would be a dog that uh, a bite somebody unless I'm in a severe injury. And I don't see any penalties for uh, a dog that has bitten somebody and just hey, bites his hand. It says for the first time offender here. If you've got any Where? dog that bites someone, the animal control takes them to the pound and tests them for rabies and quarantine them for no. If they can show they have rabies, have the rabies shots, and they're up to date, yeah, the, the dog know, owner the dog can dog keep the dog the there and quarantine at their own residence. residence. If they cannot, then it goes to the pound to be quarantined for nine days. Okay. Oh, this is nine. And that's my question. But that's the call of the animal yeah. control, too. So that there's no penalty for, us. for the offensive dog, but there is a penalty for a dangerous dog. Because there's two different definitions. Yeah. Where are you reading that on the what page? I mean, what, what section? Well, there's so many different sections there. Yeah, there is. I, I'm just saying that we have no provision or penalty for a uh, dog that bites someone and uh, the uh, injury is not severe. It's not. And we also. We address penalties when a uh, dog is declared vicious or dangerous and bite somebody severely or for a second time. Mm -hmm. well, I don't see where we have provisions for a dog that... Uh, a non-serious injury. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're talking about. We've got a definition of an offensive dog. That would be an offensive dog. Yeah. But we don't have any penalties if for that offensive dog that runs out and bites a jogger and makes a minor injury. Okay. That's section B there what you're referring to uh, 1034 yeah, 10, 1034 section B and, and then you know if we don't have that in there I also don't see where we have any provisions say uh, Reggie you might be able to help us say a dog bites someone breaks the skin uh -huh. and uh, that dog has is determined that he has not been vaccinated for rabies. The owner can't provide his certificate. So, do we have any provisions for clinical observation of that dog for Yes, so days? that dog will be quarantined at the pound for nine days. Ten, ten, ten days. days. Or ten days, nine to ten days, yes. Yeah, it should be ten days yeah. because it can take ten days for symptoms of rabies yeah. to... Uh, then after that point, then, then the dog can be released back to the owner but the, the animal control officer takes them to the vet and make sure he gets it shot and shows. Is that in another ordinance? Are those provisions in That was ordinance? just only a policy that we've had in the past, a written policy. I think it's something we probably should be looking at, including in our uh, animal ordinance. You know, if we're going to make this thing, that's, you know, we probably need to address some of those dynamics. Isn't it in the Dogs uh, running at large under the... It talks about uh, the dogs running at large. It uh, says the uh, dog is not claimed in seven days, and it will be disposed of. That's seven days. There, there, that nothing addressed. There is, not it doesn't quarantine. talk about a dog that has bitten anybody. That's not a quarantine. That's just a full thing. Yeah, she asked me if it yeah. was included yeah. in there, and I said no. So would that not be covered by at the top of the page here? We've got having bitten in an aggressive manner a human being without provocation on public or private property. Having bitten. Yeah. You're, if you're doing a dangerous animal, then you're dropping down to right. the Then we've also got everything right here, vicious, dangerous, or offensive dog on 10-34. Dangerous or vicious in this definition. Okay. So it's separated from the offensive animal. Okay, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no penalty. Okay. You might know those two. Okay. Okay. Is there any other questions uh, on the 
something that might be beneficial, like if we do have a dog that's being dangerous, that if, if it's in the possession of somebody and it escapes or breaks their chain, that they notify the police department within, uh, that that dog is loose immediately so that his officers can be aware of that. If we've got a dangerous dog roaming the streets and we know it, you know, put that on, but the owner has responsibility. If they, their animal's loose, they let us know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or if we have a dangerous dog and someone sells it, they ought to be able, they ought to have to let the police department know, animal control know, that that animal's no longer in the city and it's not a danger or something. <coughs> uh, and another thing is one of those that we talked about, the owner's responsibility, is like if, when they do deem a dog dangerous, if they take a picture of it from both sides so that they have an identification when they go up to somebody, they can't say, well, that's not, no, that's not the dog. We don't have that one anymore. And Reggie pulls out his photo and says, well, this is the photo we took when it was deemed dangerous. Any comments on that, Reggie? Or? I mean, that'd be beneficial to anybody. I mean, I mean, if you go to someone's house in the court, I mean, who's going to deem the dog vicious? Is the court going to deem the dog vicious? I mean, we got to have some someone to deem the, the, the dog vicious. I mean, if he bites someone, don't mean. I mean, are we going to deem that's every dog vicious that bites someone? That's, that's already defined. Okay. So, I mean, if we're, I mean, it's gonna take a paper trail. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I mean, you know, going, 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 going. Right. Yeah. And then you're gonna the first thing you know if you if you start doing this, you're gonna have to put the guy on full time. Uh, so. So you know, what I'm saying is, is yeah. so. it would be beneficial if Stan's dog bit whomever, and it's been deemed vicious. Well. Then we get the supply, you know, someone's going to have to take a picture of the dog and we can put it in a file. I guess, I guess, uh, like, the, we could do that at the dog pound if we, if Animal we pounded that Animal control has talked about that. So if they want to, I know they have a falling cabinet down there and they keep files on all their stuff. So if they want to take a picture of the dog and say, okay, now we deem this dog vicious, here's a picture of it. So if we go on a call, and I can say, hey guys, you got a picture of this dog? I think this is the one that was. I can see where it would be beneficial because we encountered that within the last month. There was a dog in pound and another person claimed it was theirs. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. He had a picture of his and we had a picture. And it just so happened that you got a picture of that dog still on her phone from two years ago. <laughs> and she. I don't know why Suzanne had a picture. But anyway, he cleared it up. And, and, uh, I said, no, it's, it's not your dog. So, uh, but anyway, the dog, we ended up adopting it out to somebody. But we had a person to claim it. Uh, he lost the dog two years ago. Uh, <coughs> you know, uh, yeah, it might be something else that you want to look at down the road, too, is, is uh, you know, have them chipped. It don't cost that much to have your dog chipped. <coughs> And then all you have to do is take it to a vet and they can scan it and they can tell you exactly right there and there whose dog it is. Yeah. Microchip. Mm -hmm. It don't cost that much. And them I, chips last forever. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, you know, we're talking about who's going to determine whether a dog is, uh, is uh, vicious or dangerous. I think part of that will probably kind of fall on, you know, the reporting officers that mm -hmm. are called to the scene, animal control officer and the police officer that uh, responds to uh, just make a short narrative of, right. of uh, the dog and his actions. The dog chased a jogger and and, uh, and uh, he was growling and attempting to bite the jogger. And, you know, whatever occurred that day, that the characteristics that that dog demonstrated, we need to get it documented. And, and I think those are the types of things that will mm -hmm. help us identify the uh, dangerous and vicious dogs. And, and it is it is defined in here where it's the officer or the uh, 
and the general control officer to, to determine that, yeah. which yeah. is the proper thing. Right. I agree with that. Right. And I think our police officers are, are trained in yeah. uh, proper report writing where they can get yeah. that evidence and information documented and, and filed. And what we can do also is, is if, if, if we deem a dog that way, uh, if they take the picture and keep a file down there, we can we can link that with our case number so we can put their our case number with the animal control. And if that ever comes back, we can always pull that case number up and see what the documentation of it was. Okay, we can do that if, uh, if the dog's been impounded. We can see that I mean, it's easy to do. The only thing they have to do is just keep a file on that dog down there in, in, in the pound, you know, the owner. And if we ever deem a dog vicious, is what I'm saying, then they can just keep a file down there. I can give them our case number, and they can write that case number on that file, then if we ever have any de more dealings with that, then we can just pull everything up and say, hey, here it is. for service animals. Uh, right now, the way this is, we want everybody to pick up their dog waste. Mm -hmm. But if a person with a service animal, are they going to be able to to do that? I think we could probably handle that with discretion. Okay. <laughs> uh, I really do. I don't think that's an issue that, uh, I mean, I think, I think we just use discretion on something like that. Uh, Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a good question. Yeah. That, but I no. Think, uh, uh, I don't mean to. Tell me it's not a good. No. It is. No. No. As long as we get it. Yeah. Yeah. If you notice the changes there, there's any way we can present this at the next meeting. <laughs> with the, with the changes. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Sur project over here on, on East Grand, which is uh, uh, the street runs by Gibbons Gibbons Garage. Okay, uh, I met with uh, Jeff Colfer today, and we're going to go over tomorrow in the morning. And there's a where we want to put one of the manholes. There's a four inch uh, natural gas line, but anyway, we're going to locate it tomorrow. And then once we get it located, that will give us. Uh, uh, this is where we can put our manholes, and, and uh, but anyway, uh, everything's 
based on or determined, going to be determined on where that uh, four inch uh, natural gas line is. And, I, and we're pretty sure we can make it work. Now, this is uh, this will be running from Gibbons Garage west down to what they call Wild Street, which is down to Copeland. And anyway, they'll be, what I say, four, right around 400 feet. But anyway, uh, and, and I think I mentioned the purpose of that is to take part of the pressure off of the, the line down the, the old all night station. But anyway, we'll, we should get a material list on that tomorrow and let us know what we can do. And uh, electric department project, uh, he, should, he should start it now. He, as in Jason Bewley, he should start that project, uh, I'm hoping this week, and we can move, put it, mark it off the list anyway. And uh, also, Friday of last week, uh, I had uh, the mulch was delivered here from uh, Jeff City, wasn't it? Anyway, it was yeah. delivered, at, and it's, uh, it's got to be a special mulch. Uh, kitty cushion is what they call it, and anyway, we had a, almost 90 yards cubic yards delivered to the park and that took care of the, the water damage from the flooding and, and then uh, uh, Murma wants you to have at least three inches of, of this mulch over the whole uh, playground and so that uh, that took care of that project and then some and, and uh, I got a thumbs up on part of it from a little girl today and then I got a thumbs up on part of it so anyway this was great and but it, it all looks nice. It's, it's, I, uh, I have pictures if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that project, that's taken care of all the flood damage done in the lower park is done. So. And uh, we, we need to appoint uh, a planning and zoning. Uh, as you know, uh, last meeting, uh, Scott Fleetwood turned in his resignation. He's taking a job in Chicago selling lumber. But, uh, Noel, and, uh, Greg Taylor, of course, that uh, he called with, uh, with Greg's name. And this is, there's two Greg Taylors. Now, there's yeah. one that works for Copeland, and then Greg, I think, the one you're talking about, lives in Aviview Heights and works at Walmart. But anyway, uh, uh, Noel gave me his name, and I called him, and uh, he said that he would, he would accept it. So uh, I would uh, uh, ask for a motion to. Uh, Appoint uh, Greg to uh, fill it, fill that vacancy if uh, if I could get a motion for that. So moved. And second. I second that motion. Okay. All all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thirtieth, we had the bid opening for the uh, the lower park. And did you did you look at the? Okay. Did, did I just put one on each side? Did mm -hmm. you share that? Did you look at the yeah. price on those? So I had three bids to come in on it. And uh, if each of us had a chance to look at those. So we had Peterson Construction and JB Construction and Bloodhound Construction. So uh, the turned in bids. And there's a. Peterson Construction, one fifty one hundred and fifty eight thousand. <coughs> JB Construction, one hundred and nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Bloodhound Construction, sixty eight thousand. Got building and construction experience. Is that kind of in line with well, that's, what you uh, expected? That's, we, that's, we, that's, that's right where I thought it would be, right yeah. around 70,000. We, well, well, we, yeah, we, were, we, we were talking about that number, and, and uh, uh, that's where it came in at. And see, we're just talking about a 20 by 20, basically, mm -hmm. bathroom made out of country blocks. So. Yeah. And that's and at the cool. existing location. Where yeah. the, the, the current the current bathrooms right. at right. where we already have electric and, uh, sewer and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. We'll, uh, if, uh, if, yeah. they, if they allow us to build it in that uh, spot, we'll take it down. No. Have they, we haven't gotten approval on that yet. Uh, it'll, it'll probably be, he told, uh, Andy Daniels said it would probably take six weeks to get okay. it out of floodplain, and uh, 
So, and that'll, uh, according to uh, Jeremiah's tape, which is blood down construction, he uh, he said it would be at least that long before he could get to it. Get to it. And then we have to tear it down also. So, I would recommend a, a motion to accept blood down construction. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Like I say, it, it sounds like it'll be uh, this fall before we can start. Okay. The first motion. Uh, second. I, I will say hear. that here a while back when we had the flood, the water went over the little footbridge mm -hmm. and there wasn't any water yeah. there for that bathroom to sit down. And the water was up over that. And the good thing about it, our surveyor seen that too. He was down there early that morning and seen the same thing. So, uh, and anyway, uh, let's see. We got a. I guess I need a motion to uh, approve the purchase of a mower for the parks department. And it, uh, I think this is it was a little over. This is I think it was eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. But I've got eight thousand nine hundred. But anyway, there are boxes. Less than nine thousand dollars for a, a trade-in for with a heritage for a, for a new uh, mower at, uh, for the park department, and uh, I've checked with Peggy, and the money's there too. Yeah, we're going to do it in this budget cycle. Yeah, in this budget cycle, yeah, we're going to do our July. So, uh, uh, a motion. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to approve the purchase of a, a new John Deere mower for the uh, park department. Good. I'll make a motion to purchase a new mower. Okay. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, this next one could be a shock. It did make Carl, uh, Carl Slate with the uh, tree department. He comes in this week or, or last week one and he says, you know, I've got to make arrangements for salt. I said, salt for what? <laughs> he said, for this winter. <clears throat> and anyway, uh, he said, yeah, I have to, I have to make arrangements now. And, and anyway, uh, I said, okay. And, and I said, how much, you, how much you think you're going to have to add? He said, typically one winter, it takes four to five tractor trailer loads of salt to get us through the winter. And uh, he said he'd like to get uh, uh, get on the list for four loads. He got, you know. The, the winter have been mild and they've got a little bit left over, so uh, uh, he wants to put his name in for four loads of salt now, which is, seems a little odd, but anyway, and that those four loads of salt for just for your uh, benefit to, to know about what it costs is they're going to be about ten thousand five hundred dollars for for the salt just to, to treat our streets in the winter time. So. Well, I have fifteen budgeted. So. Okay. Well, he, uh, and he, I, he take more I certainly you don't have to tell him that. <laughs> he's going to try to do it with, uh, with four loads and, and a little bit left over. But when he came in here to tell me about that, I thought, good grief. Salt already. And uh, this is just informational for the, we got the uh, Children's Miracle Network deal there in the jail and bail at Walmart. And, uh, I would uh, like for somebody to come over and donate enough money to get me out of jail all <laughs> afternoon. And all I need is a hundred bucks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spend twenty minutes in jail. But they uh yeah, pack a lot. But anyway, uh, I got this letter from Walmart. Uh, and they said that uh, they raised twenty three hundred dollars over there last year. That, that sounds about right. right. And uh, Hey, uh, we, we have been told that we hosted the most successful jail and bail for the Chir Children Miracle Network that Cox, uh, Cox Health had seen. So hopefully we can be that good or better this year. So, And I, I think it's really important. And that money stays, the money that's raised stays right here in Southern Missouri. So uh, I think it's a good thing. But I don't have anything else. Did all of us have anything? Do I have a motion to go into close? Close session. Go into close session. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.